cousins. How y'all? I've been sitting here ruminating about some of my friends and some of the things I've seen. For instance, an oil well. A gusher blowing high, wide, and handsome in the great state of Oklahoma. Oklahoma means red man's land. And less than 50 years ago, all this was Indian territory. Here are the Osages, the Cherokees, the Creeks, the Choctaws, the Seminoles, the Chickasaws, even some Pawnees, raced their horses over the prairies, fished the streams, grew their crops, and raised their cattle. And all the time, the oil was underneath the ground. Well, it had to come out. And refineries had to be built to process it and make it what it is today, the lifeblood of our civilization. It's oil that drives the ships, powers the trains and the planes, and fills the traffic lanes and serves man in a thousand and one ways. Yes, sir, oil's a mighty valuable commodity, sought for and fought for all over the globe, in Arabia and Persia, Venezuela, Algiers and Mexico. But talk to an oil man anywhere, and he'll tell you that the oil capital of the world is Tulsa, a prairie city rising out of the Oklahoma Plains. Today, the nerve center of a mighty industry, Tulsa. Tulsa today, but let's turn back to the early 20s, when Tulsa was a ballin', spoilin' boomtown, riding the crest of the golden tide of oil. Oil was still a game then, made fortunes for some, but let me tell you about a few of my friends whose lives depended on cattle, the finest cattle country in the world. There's bottom, Jim. Purfords. Purebreds. Not much like Longhorns, huh? Oh, look. Now, <laughs> oh, Cherokee, quit spooking those calves. Crazy girl. Oh, she'll gentle down. Her mother did. She grows more and more like her every day. Well, Jim, what do you think of my purebreds? Fine looking stock, Nils. Sure had to dig mighty deep to buy them. But they'll pay out. <laughs> Fine boss, spooking her own cattle. You should put some on your place, Jim. They'd really prosper on that blue stem grass. Maybe I would see Natani if I had someone to take care of the house while I took care of the cattle. Help! 
What is it, Steve? Trouble. Plenty of trouble. Down to the creek. like this all up and down the creek. I counted more than 30 already, and there's apt to be more. What killed him, Steve? What did it? I'll show you. Oil. It's manure well on the Medwick place. Mr. Tanner, I won $20,000. Interesting. I'd like a million myself. 
A million couldn't repay me for what I've lost. I'm Cherokee Lansing. Two weeks ago... Yes, I know. But, Miss Lansing, your father was trespassing. He ignored repeated warnings. Look, I'm not here for blood money. But I don't intend to see my father's ranch go under. Those purebred Herefords that were killed were worth $20,000. He mortgaged everything he owned to buy them. I want that money from you, Mr. Tanner. Let's get a few things straight. I'm not Mr. Tanner. I'm his legal advisor. And I've assured Mr. Tanner he has no legal responsibility for the death of your father or the loss of his cattle. But Tanner's oil was responsible. You might have difficulty proving it was Tanner's oil. Of course, you always have the privilege of bringing suit. But I'm afraid you'd find Tanner Petroleum a pretty powerful opponent. My advice to you, Miss Lansing, is forget it. You tell Mr. Tanner I don't forget that easy. Run back to the ranch, Steve. Give the boys their time. You mean you're giving up the buffalo haunt? No. It's being taken away. I hate to see the old brand go. Met a lot to now. Thanks. I'm sure whoever takes it over can use a good top hand like you. Bye. Bye, Steve. I told him to the ranch, but he wouldn't listen. Chuck. Yes, Miss Lansing? Is Pinky Jimson still working at the Longhorn? Yep, I believe he is. Spotting in day after tomorrow. When your roundup days are over, 
There'll be pastures white with clover for you, faithful pal of mine. Thanks, Pinky. Dad would have liked that. Little break, cousins. <laughs> Fire water? No. Pinky, what do you know about Bruce Tanner? A lot? A little. What's on your mind, cousin? What's on my mind isn't fit for those tender little ears. I've got a score to settle with Mr. Tanner. A big score. No knife, no gun. Killing's too easy. I want to get him where he lives. He's a big man, cousin. He's got a lot of scalps. I'd like to see yours among them. You mean money big? Real tall. Throws a shattered clear to the capital. You get what I mean. Courts. Judges. Corporation commission. A few of the federal boys. It's all strictly legal, of course. You see, Tanner's what you could call a leading citizen. He's done a lot for Dawson. Must be wonderful to be rich and powerful enough to step on people. Be respected for it. Pinky, oh, sooner. Got a hundred dollars, says you can't play. Three o'clock in the morning. Bet you don't know how it goes. Oh. Homer. Homer, here she is again. The girl who bets me. Pinky, I'd like you to meet the finest little girl in the state of Oklahoma. Please, now, we're talking. Got it all figured out what I'm going to do. What's your name, Queenie? My name is Cherokee Lansing, Johnny. She's my cousin. All the little better. Homer, where's your seal? Yeah. Homer's the finest little notary in the state of Oklahoma. Never trouble without him. Anything from you? No argument. You make your cousin think I'm picking up. Johnny, look. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Excuse me. I don't want these. What'll I do with them? Johnny's in an outgoing mood tonight. I'll give it back to him in the morning. Thank you. Like we're gonna have a warm evening. First chance you get, you vamoose. I'll see you at your hotel in a minute. He wants to see me. Have him come up, please. Better look these over, cousin. What are they? Leases, oil leases. Crude oil, Johnny. Yeah. Gives you the right to drill for oil on those pieces of land. Why, this is for Bill Penny's ranch. In the Lightfoot place. You're up by Jim Redbird's. There's no oil there. So far, there ain't nobody left. It's wildcat country. Well, you give them back to that wildcat friend of yours. Now, that might be a bit hard to arrange. Ooh, the Longhorn really got to jumping after you left last night. Crude oil Johnny ain't apt to be singing three o'clock in the morning anymore. Seems he's dead. He's dead? Permanent. Sorry. Yeah, he was a right guy. Might tone death, though. 
What will I do with these? Legally, they're yours. Hello, Pinky. This is my cousin, Cherokee, Mr. Tanner. And one of your most attractive cousins, Pinky. Pinky and I happen to be blood kin, Mr. Tanner. I'm quarter Cherokee. And obviously on the warpath for me. May I make this small peace offering? What is it you've come to see me about, Mr. Tanner? Miss Lansing, I could tell you that I was shocked and displeased by Mr. Winter's treatment of you last evening and that he had no authority to speak to you the way he did. And that I'm here to make amends. I'd be a doggone liar. You haven't got a leg to stand on, uh, legally. However, I have a check here for $20,000. Yes. Go on. You were talking about these leases. Uh, yes, I was. I already control some of that area, and I'd like to have it solid. Now, you need $20,000 to save your ranch, and I'm prepared to pay that for the leases. You don't look like Santa Claus to me. Tell me what they're really worth. To you, nothing. To me, possibly nothing. Possibly a great deal. You see, Miss Lansing, oil's a gamble. I like to gamble, too. Right now, I'm prepared to risk $100,000 exploring that area. Sound like your kind of game? Now, this is certified. It's money in the bank. Or purebred Herefords grazing on your own range. Sounds like a pretty fair proposition, cousin. I'm not selling. Do you mind telling me why? Because I don't like the way you operate. You oil men come into our country, pollute the streams, ruin the land, kill our cattle. Yes, and our men, too. You're being childish. You're acting like your Cherokee grandparents who shot arrows at the first locomotive. This is oil country. The wealth is under the ground, not on top of it. But is it necessary to destroy the land to produce oil? Excuse me, Senator Tony. You mentioned our grandparents shooting arrows at locomotives. Perhaps you never heard of the five civilized nations. Never bothered to learn about the Oklahoma Red Man. Before the Civil War, Mr. Tanner, our grandparents owned plantations in the South. Had libraries, printing presses. We vote. We have colleges. We think. And we think oil has been bad for this country. Shall we continue this later, Miss Lansing? Perhaps at dinner? No. Don't tell me you're going into the oil business. Why not? You have no monopoly on brains or luck. No. And I'm not as pretty as you are, either. No sense being mule-headed, cousin. And you know nothing about oil, Sinatani. I can learn, I can learn. But cattle is our business. I know my ranch is not as fine as a buffalo horn, but with you... No, Jim. Not until I've settled with Bruce Tanner. And I can do that only one way. Your father wouldn't like to see you smeared with oil. Ain't you overlooking a few small details? In the first place, you ain't found any oil. Second place, the odds are all against you finding it. Third place, you ain't even got the money to start finding it in the first place. I'll get the money somewhere. Well, don't look at me. All the money I got in the world's right there in that pocket, and don't even bulge me a little. I intended to get some purebred Herefords, like Nelson. But if that's what you want, Zena, Tony. And another redskin bit the dust. Okay, keep it like that. I don't know, Miss Lansing, it don't look good. Should have hit oil sand before this. But you're going to keep drilling, aren't you? We'll keep making holes just as long as you make payroll. And that reminds me. If you'll just give me until tomorrow. You've been telling us that for two weeks. <laughs> Soft, sticky, hard. Well, well. Nothing like scientific terminology.
I'd say you were getting into the lower end of cut sandstone. Have you hit gas yet? Oh, one of those geology guys, huh? Miss Lansing, did you send for this rock hound? I certainly did not. What are you doing here? The name is Brady, remember? You couldn't be crude oil, Johnny's son. I thought I'd like to see the gal who rolled my old man. Pop always was a good picker. Now, just a minute, Mr. Brady. Don't get excited. I don't expect to get the leases back. I'm just sentimental. I thought if maybe you had his set of cufflinks or his watch, I'd be willing to buy them from you. Charlie, you skin polecats. Out of respect to your old man, I'm giving you a chance to walk out of here in one piece. How did you happen to pick this spot? This uh, jar head stamp on the ground? Listen, Rock Island. If I were you, I'd start pulling tools before that gas blows in. Okay, Professor. You asked for it. Uncle Brady, while I used to play football with the Yales? With the Princetons. Oh. Is that what you wanted? surprise you to know I'm honestly sorry. I was hoping you'd make an oil well. Remember, I've got holdings up there, too. Let's get out of the traffic. I understand you dropped 15,000 on that dust. That dealer didn't lose any time reporting to you, did he? Why, well, every oil man that tells it keeps his on a while back. How would you like to get your ante back? 
I'm still interested in those leases. Miss Lansing, calling Miss Lansing. Naturally, the price will be a little Lansing, lower. But... Calling Miss Lansing. Miss Lansing, calling Miss Lansing. Up here, Lansing. Sir. Get it, Chuck. Calling Mr. Fred. Mr. Fred. Sign here and give these men a check. What for? 45 sacks of cement and 2,000 feet of casing. You've got to cement off. What are you talking about? You've got to shut off that water. You run casing, then pump down cement. Then you drill through and keep going. Sounds very simple. Never try it? Or is it something you read in a book? Both. It may cost another 5,000, but I say it's worth it. I don't. But I'm just a practical oil man. Are you bragging or apologizing? You practical oil men have wasted enough oil and gas to power this country for another 20 years. Someday I'd like to hear about the fields you've developed. Well, maybe you will. How about it? I'm fresh out of money, Mr. Brady. Not even a coupling to pull. Then you'll sell? I'll think it over. Big order, huh? Give me that. Hey, hold it. How long will this job take? This casing and cementing off? Two or three weeks. The professor's pretty sure of himself. And you once said you like to gamble. All right, I'll make you another proposition. I'll give you $5,000 now and three weeks to pay off or to bring in your wealth. And if I don't? Now you get the leases. Take it. Write your check. Is that all right with you, Jim? I guess it'll have to be, Zena Tony. Shall I make it out to you? No, make it out to my partner, Mr. Brady. Thanks, Zena Tony. In Cherokee, Zena Tony means redhead. But to you, Mr. Brady, it means boss. Maybe the jawhead was right. Now, don't you stir. I know, I thought three weeks would be enough. I was wrong. Have you paid up the boys? No. They're working until the end of the midnight tower. I guess we can score one up for Mr. Tanner, the practical oil man. Goodbye, Mr. Brady. Send me one of your books sometime. I'll do better than that. I'll buy you the best dinner in Tulsa and a bottle of champagne to cry in. No, thanks. Suit yourself. Nothing like being a good loser. I'll be ready in 20 minutes. Cherokee. What are you folks doing here? I thought y'all was out making an oil well. I uh, once saw a man make 14 straight passes. Five would do it for us. Come on. Okay. Brad! Brad! 
Ted, darling. Hello, Ken. But I thought you were still in Tampico. Wherever have you been hiding? Has it been terribly dull, darling? No, not since uh, Tampico. Oh, Candy. This is Cherokee Lansing. Miss Candy, uh... Williams. Cherokee. What an odd name. So, so sort of Indianish, Isn't it, Bruce? And Candy's so sort of stickyish, Isn't it, honey? Seven, excuse me. Five one hundred dollar chips, please. Good night, next. Hello, Miss Lansing. Hello, Mr. Tanner. Oh, studying rock formations, Professor. Bones. Oh, giving up the oil business. Not yet. Shooting a hundred. Come on, Dex. Snake Eyes, a loser, coming out to the next row. Shooting two. Boxcars, another loser. Boy, are you salty. Give me those dominoes. Professor, there are some things you can learn only at a ranch bunkhouse. Come on, little old Maverick, let's start a stampede. Seven, a winner. Play the line. The four rides. Need new spurs and a silver sack. Come on, Boone. Let's get at it. Another natural. Play the line. <laughs> Let it ride. Okay, Mustang, pitch and box. This year's cowgirl needs some luck. The 11. Three rows. That's wonderful. 14, 15, going to 1,600. Shoot the work. Sorry, Miss Lansing, the limit's 1,000. The man needs to die by inches. Shooting a 1,000. White-faced cow with a big brown eye. 7 or 11. That's it. 7 it is. Another 1,000. Now, wait a minute. She shoots 100. Oh, let it ride. Oh, let it ride. Oh, and 2,500 on the side to you, Tanner. You're faded. Iron is ready and the brand is hot. The number is seven for all I've got. Two aces, a loser. Oh, that's a shame. Well, you are a gambler, Miss Lansing. It's
dollars an hour. Twenty-four thousand dollars a day when we've only started. Tanner was right. Man, oh man. Fifty thousand barrels. Here she comes now. I'll have the dollars for your fighting plan. Thank you. Bye -bye. The car's at the curb, Miss Lansing, and the keys are in. Thank you. Best residential site in the whole city, Miss Lansing. I'm having the Waldorf suite reserved. Good you, morning. Lansing. How does it feel to be Tulsa's oil queen? So far, just fine. I've got another proposition for you. How about lunch? <laughs> no, thanks. But I'm glad to see you're a good loser. Mm, don't get that idea. I have no respect for good losers. They get to make a habit of it. <laughs> Besides, you're forgetting that I own part of that field, too. You'll have to drill mighty fast to keep up with me. Good morning. There she is, Miss Lansing. All you have to do is step on the starter and drive her away. Send me the bill. Hi. Hello, Sina, Tony. Like it? Who wouldn't? Huh. They told me Brad was here. No, no, no. What are you doing down there? Rock hounding. Well, it's just about the way I figured it. That outcropping over there looked like the peak of the anticline. And from the slope of the rock strata here, I'm sure of it. That means your ranch is right on the structure. Oil on Jim's ranch? There's no doubt of it. That's wonderful. Is it? Jim, oil and cattle can get along together. Why not let us show you how? Now, there's our well. The others will space one to every ten acres, each well fenced. There'll be plenty of pasture in between. So Jim agreed. And a year later, it was just like Brad had promised. Jim was satisfied, Brad was proud. But Cherokee was ambitious. She was beginning to see what oil money could really mean. You see, Jim, we haven't spoiled your pasture. Plenty of room for cattle. You did a good job, Brad. I'm glad I gave you my lease. Tell me something. What are you going to do with all of your money? Hmm? I'm going to get the best purebreds that money can buy. Same old Jim. Why don't you take a place in town and really enjoy life? <laughs> and you're just as bad. Spending all of your time in the field. Just a couple of stick in the mud, sir. Well, you are. You ought to see the way Tulsa's growing. Three new office buildings, a new water supply, <laughs> an airport. I was just on my way over to see you. Here's your royalty check. 
This ain't enough. Why you got only one well on my place? Tanner's drilled three wells on Galagina's place. But we're not operating Tanner's way, Mr. Lightfoot. Why not? Same oil under both places, and Galagina take out three times as much. But there's more to it than that. Sinatani's protecting our grass. All I want is my share of the oil. My lease says you got to drill well for well with next door place. If you don't, I break lease and sign with Tanner. Can he do that? He can if we don't offset. And if we do, we'll have another forest of derricks. Jim, can you get the ranchers together at your place tonight? Sure. Well, come on, we'll round up the oil men. Tanner, too? Especially Tanner. He'll be there. Good evening. How do you do, Mr. Kelly? Oh, Mr. Kelly, I'm glad you could come, nice sir. Nice to see you, Brad. I kept my promise. John Ryan of the Creek Nation. How do you do? Black Coat of Seminole. Glad to meet you, sir. Gentlemen. Hello, Tanner. Good evening. What is this, the gathering of the tribes? I think your scalp will be safe, Mr. Tanner. Evening, competitors. Gentlemen. Gentlemen, would you kindly find a place and sit down? Thank you. We've brought you landowners and oil operators here tonight to see if we can reach an agreement on the proper development of our field. But first, I want to show you a picture. Pinky. Coming up, cousin. Hit the switch, Mason. Now. now, this was the Glen Pool. Once the richest field in Oklahoma, and you all know its history. Flush production for a while, and then it went on the pump, and then it died. And look at it now. Coming up, Todd. A wasteland. All right, Pinky. Not one blade of grass has grown on that land for more than 10 years. And beyond that, no more than 30% of the oil was ever recovered. And what caused it? Senseless cutthroat competition. Every man sinking as many wells as he can, as fast as he can, for fear that the fellow next more than his share of the oil. Can't we learn from the past? Uh, what's on your mind, Brady? We've got to agree to drill no more than one well for every 10 acres we control. We've got to limit production to a set amount each day. Sure, it may mean a smaller immediate profit, but in the long run, more profits. And to you ranchers and homesteaders, preservation of your land long after the oil is gone. Hold on, Professor. You say the Glenfield is dead. What of the things it brought to light? What of Tulsa, its skyscrapers, its homes, its industries? They're still here and they're growing. And they were brought here not by a trickle of oil, but by a flood. Oil and land aren't sacred. They're just the tools men use to build bigger things. You other operators can do as you like. But I'm going to keep on sinking wells. I'm going to make Tulsa the oil capital of the world. And if you landowners aren't satisfied with the way your leases are being handled, come to me. I give you my lease. Oh, no, you don't. We'll drill well for well on your place. And that goes for anyone else who isn't satisfied. Wait. Think before you decide. The land will be here long after the oil is gone. Will it be a land of green grass and clear water? Or will it be like that which you have seen? I want my share of the oil. Then I want mine. How about you, Lacey Mouse? It's as much mine as it is theirs. You'll get it. Jim? I want no more wells on my place. Promise me that, Sina Tani. All right, if that's the way you want it. You're beginning to sound like a practical oil man. Maybe we ought to talk business. Lunch tomorrow. Too bad, young fellow, but it looks like Tanner's calling the play. That seems pretty clear. 12.30. We'll start spudding new wells in the morning. Are those your orders or Tanner's? I'm just facing facts. But I don't have to like them, and I think you do. It's open.
Are you that mad? Not mad. Just unnecessary. I didn't say so. You didn't need an engineer to develop that field. You can hire a drill pusher anywhere. Where are you going? Venezuela, Algiers, Tampico. What's the difference? Not on the shoes. You once offered to buy me the best dinner in Tulsa and a bottle of champagne to cry into. I'll do the same for you. No, sir. Okay. But as a man once said, there's nothing like being a good loser. All right. But make mine bourbon. I don't like champagne. Pick me up in 20 minutes. Cherokee. Oil means more to me than just quick millions. It's like, well, it's like those purebred Herefords were to your father. Running away won't solve anything. Bread, I need you. Maybe there'll be other chances. Not without legislation. If you stay here, you can fight for that. Go into politics. Oil's just part of the picture. Tulsa's growing and we can grow with it. Who knows how far we can go? the day our third well came in. And this was our second. Surely you remember this one. What a sight I was. Derek shot up and the oil money flowed in faster than Cherokee could spend it. She was the oil queen, all right. That didn't seem to be enough. Wasn't just a question of getting even with Tanner anymore. Her ambition had run away with her. She was like Tulsa's new buildings, reaching for the sky. Jenny, would you fix these dresses nicely for me, please? Yes. Let's see now. I've arranged for the musicians, the caterers, the florists. And half the population of Tulsa. I bet you couldn't rent a dress suit within a hundred miles here. Had four offered for mine this afternoon. Pinky. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yes, Bruce. He'll be here. And Mr. Griffith, too. All right, Bruce. See you tonight.
darling. Oh, where have you been all week? Trying to sell conservation to a couple of politicians. How much am I offered for my vote? Here, let me take your coat. I'm glad you're in time for the party. What's the occasion this time? Got your cut. Reception for the opera company. I've invited the governor, Senator Watts, Mrs. And Bruce Tanner? Well, after all, he's one of the sponsors of the opera. You're not really jealous, are you? Yes, I am. You needn't be. I'm going to marry you. When? In the sweet by and by. Oh, Pinky, hush. Don't mind me, cousin. Man's waiting for his answer. When? Don't pin me down now, Brad. I've got a thousand things to do. There. I've got to see that caterer. moving over, cousin. Ma'am, have you ever been on... <laughs> no, ma'am. You ain't ever been on a horse. <laughs> well, ma'am, I ain't in Oklahoma. Oh, 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 just make yourself comfortable right there. Out in Oklahoma, we got a peculiar kind of a rhythm. Have you ever seen a cow hen riding the range, rounding up the cattle? Well, there's something about those hoofbeats that conjures up a rhythm, a song. You all know the words. The words are easy, and you know the first one. Tulsa. Swing it down to Tulsa. Come on, Shorty, give me them hoofbeats. Down the trail to the one I love. I can hardly wait till I get to Tulsa. Climb on, cousin. With the moon and the stars and the one I'm dreaming of. Let's back it up, e <laughs> the word along. Nothing can be lacking when I get back in Tulsa. Thank you. 
at the end of the trail with that loving gal. conservation bill. Now, I'd certainly like to have a little talk with you about that. What are some of the measures you have in mind? Well, Governor, it's something that we're going to have to come to sooner or later. <laughs> They're waiting upstairs. and the papers are ready to be signed. This is a mighty big project, Miss Lansing. Miss Lansing, this merger puts you and Tanner in the major leagues. I hope so. Well, I don't think Standard Oil is going to go out of business, but they'll know we're alive. <laughs> Bruce, this is more production than I agreed to supply. It's a bigger deal than we figured, Jerry, but you can handle it. Can she? Yes. Of course, I can't make any promises, but I will appoint a commission. Well, that's good enough for me. Now, sir, if you'll excuse me. Go right ahead. Say, Pinky, have you seen Cherokee? Yeah, she went upstairs. Not again. See you tomorrow, Bruce. Good night. Congratulations. You know, Jerry, there's one section of your field you've barely touched. Jim Redbird's place. I know, but I made a promise about that. Well, offer him another sixth, even a fifth. This tell-oil deal is too important, Jerry. Besides, he can't object to your making him a fortune. No, but Brad has some funny ideas, too. He won't be easy to persuade. Jerry, you underestimate yourself. There isn't anything you couldn't get a man to agree to. <laughs> Brad! I must tell you some wonderful news. I'm going to be married to a man you all know. A man I'm very much in love with. Brad Brady. Forgive me for being such a jealous idiot. You're the nicest idiot I ever hoped to marry. Well, I almost forgot the good news. The governor's going to appoint a commission on conservation. Oh, that's wonderful. They're coming here to look at our field. And when they see the difference between Tanner's methods and the way we've handled Jim Redbird's place... Brad... I know we'll get the legislation we want. Brad, listen to me. What? I've made a deal with Tanner. It's big, darling. It can mean our own pipelines, refineries, filling stations. The whole works. Well, you might have said something to me. As a partner, if nothing else. I was afraid you wouldn't go along. It means drilling more wells on Jim Redbird's place. I know I promised. But Jim wouldn't hold me to that promise now. He couldn't. Besides, it's in his own best interest, isn't it? You ask the questions and you answer them too. What do you want me to say? Just say that you're with me all the way. Give me the word and we can start our honeymoon tomorrow. And by the time we get back, we'll be right up there with Tanner. 
I'm afraid that's a little bit too high for me, Cherokee. I don't think I could breathe the same air as Tanner. What are you, a boy scout? Or a man? For some years I thought I was a man. But now I'm not so sure. Well, you better make up your mind, mister. The man I marry's got to be sure. Oh, no. You don't want a husband. You want a trained seal you can pull around on a leash. I can't stand tight collars. Well, I'm glad this happened tonight. I'm beginning to see what you really are. So am I. And I don't like me. You have a short memory. What were you when I first met you? A broken down jaw head full of empty talk. I've dragged you all the way to the top. And now that we have a chance for the big kill, what do I find? A scared little boy. Tano was right. You're small and you think small. I don't need you. I don't want you. You go find some scared little girl and tell her what a big, brave man you are. Clashes, change it to green. Leave it to a woman every time. We'll change it. By the way, I've been meaning to congratulate you on your engagement. The engagement's broken. That's what I mean. Lansing, do you accept expensive gifts from men? Oh, it's beautiful. Turn it over. The deed to the buffalo horn. Do I begin to look more like Santa Claus now? No. But you look awfully distinguished. Distinguished enough to be governor? The party thinks I'd make a good candidate. They have some wild idea I'm a fine public spirit citizen. Of course, I built a few skyscrapers and sponsored the Spavano water system. Governor Tanner, you could be. There's only one catch. They tell me the voters prefer family men. You'd make a lovely first lady, Cherry. Thanks, Bruce. We're a lot alike, Redhead. Smart, ambitious, and hard as a driller's fist. Right now, Tulsa's our city. We can make Oklahoma our state. After that, who knows? What do you say? Bruce! The Indian, Redbird. He won't let our men on his place. He almost took a shot at me. But Jim wouldn't do a thing like that. It wasn't no pop gun he was pointing. Says he doesn't want any more wells. Just say the word, Mr. Tanner, and we'll take care of that Indian for keeps. No! I won't have anything like that, Bruce. We need that oil, Cherry. We've got to have it. But there must be some other way. There is. You can't break the lease with a shotgun. Get me Judge McKay. Yes. Well, this lease seems to be in order. Oh, what's this all about? Your Honor, I want no more wells on my place. But you, you signed the lease. It doesn't restrict the number of wells. I don't want my land destroyed. But great Scott, man, it's oil land. Don't you want the royalties that properly belong to you? Apparently he doesn't, Your Honor, and he doesn't want anyone else to have them either. Well, frankly, I could better understand your attitude if these people had refused to put in more wells. Mr. Winslow, has the Indian Department certified to this man's competency? Yes, sir. He ceased being a ward of the government on his 21st birthday. Well, I'm not at all sure he doesn't need a guardian. 
All we ask, Your Honor, is that he be restrained from further interference with our operations. No more shotguns. I so order. And I am issuing the injunction. What kind of justice is this which compels a man to stand by while his land is destroyed? If it is my land, it is my oil. I give you the oil. All of it. I give you the royalties. I want nothing from oil. And I want nothing from you, Sinatoni. But no more derricks on my land. Mr. Redbird, this is an official proceeding, and I can hold you in contempt of court. Mr. Winslow, I seriously question this man's competency. The department has no jurisdiction, Your Honor. Well, the court has. Mr. Redbird, if you cause any more trouble, this court will take steps to declare you a mentally incompetent and appoint a guardian to handle your affairs. Try to understand. How can I understand, Sinatani? You heard what the judge said. I'm crazy. I'm a crazy Indian. I want to feel real proud, Cherokee. Thank you. Wait. Sherry, where are you going? To tell Jim there'll be no more wells on his land. I can't afford to be sentimental now. There's too much at stake. Yes, and I've just realized what. You stop now and you stop Tell Oil. We'll lose a fortune. We deserve to. Welcome home, Colonel. Where's Jim, Pinky? He's gone, Brad. I've got to find him. She's down from the mountains, Brad. She's my cousin again.
the peel's on fire. Come on, let's go.
Remember that, Jim. You're the one I knew. this happened. Oh, sure. I ought to give this fire bug a medal. Since when is it a crime to throw a match into a stream of running water? But there was oil in that water. So you admit your oil polluted that stream? No, I admit nothing. Oh, what's the difference? That field's going to come to life again. But when it does, it's going to be just the way Brad planned it, with spaced wells. And fences to protect the cattle. And restricted oil production. If we can prove conservation here, the whole state will follow. The whole nation. Miss Lansing, I could kiss you. Professor, that's still a good idea. Well, cousins, that's the way it worked out. Modern oil fields are a lot different from the old ones, like Signal Hill and Kettleman. Nowadays in East Texas, Louisiana, and California's Cuyama Valley, you can see conservation working. And it's good for everybody, cattlemen, oil men, and us Tulsans. Yes, sir? Tulsa's still the oil capital of the world, and mighty proud of it, and proud of the folks who made it so.